DSC's Trailing the Hunter's Moon is presented by DSC, Conservation, Education, and Protecting Hunter's Rights. Ruger, rugged, reliable firearms. Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Trijicon, brilliant aiming solutions. Wildlife systems, serving hunters and landowners since 1987. We've made it to deep south Texas. We're on the HY 200 Ranch with Wildlife Systems. We're going to be hunting Nail Guy for the next few days. So here at the gun range, going to check the zero on the Rugers. And uh, we'll be hunting this afternoon here soon. When's, when's the nail guy rut normally? Is it winding down now or is it? Yeah, it's starting to wind down. Yeah. Uh, they're still still with cows some, but it's probably really the strongest in January, I would think. Yeah. I couldn't remember if it was midwinter or if it was early spring. And the females always have twins also. Yeah. They do well down here. They've done well ever since they were introduced. Heck, they're all the way down in Mexico, parts of Mexico now, aren't they? Uh, Just pretty much on straight on down the coastline. Mm -hmm. It's challenging to judge the horn length. Oh yeah. <laughs> Take a little walk. Where we think we have a herd. Or where we know there's a herd if they haven't moved on us. and a handful of bulls. Some young stuff. Young bulls, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. I'm trying to see if there's, I would think there's at least one good bull in there with them cows. But. The trickiest part about hunting an elk guy is being able to get close to one. So we finally found our first couple of groups. And like most elk guy, they see us before you see them. That's what's happened, so we're going to double back around and see if we can't find some new groups. This segment of DSC's Trailing the Hunter's Moon is brought to you by 
Double Nickel Taxidermy. Lot of stalks on that guy from this place. The oh, wind's picking up too. We'll go check that other spot where there, there's some water there and okay. see what happens. Not here right now. One of them's going that way out there. This is the bigger bull here. I think so. I think so. I see these two over here. Another young bull. Two young bulls. That was cool. That was really cool. The whole bull wouldn't stand there like that. Two young bulls. That was fun. The fact that he's hanging out with these well, the three other ones tells is a telltale. Yeah. You want that single bull, especially Well, hell, at least I know I'm gonna be able to maybe kill one with you. You got us this close. <laughs> Just cool looking animals. And if they had, if they really had big horns. Oh gosh. Everybody would want to want to hunt them and everybody would know what they were. So many people don't. I mean it's know what they are. And this would be a, this is a, can be a very challenging hunt. This is I think it's cool. Uh, let's move out of here quietly. Good stuff. Get that close. That was within within range of being able to kill one. Just just not the right bull. But the challenge of being able to get within a shooting distance of a nail guy is a challenge in itself. So we'll take that for the win. This segment of DSC's Trailing the Hunter's Moon is brought to you by Ripcord Rescue Travel Insurance. We got your back. Howdy, I'm Greg Simons with Wildlife Systems. One of the neat conservation success stories these days is right here in Texas on some of these exotic game ranches where you have private landowners that have invested their lands and their financial resources into various species of exotic game that uh, some of which in their homeland areas are either imperiled or threatened. Some of those species include scimitar horned oryx, addicts, even Nilgai antelope and others. And it's these repository of, of populations of animals right here in Texas that if we ever lose those species of animals in their homeland areas, 
we can take comfort in knowing that we'll still have healthy populations of those species right here in Texas, and it's important that we recognize that it's hunter's dollars that generally capitalize and incentivize landowners to carry forward with these conservation practices. I didn't know I'd sweat this much for the middle of February. You're welcome what? to South Texas. <laughs> only 90 degrees. Thank goodness there is a breeze. Yeah. Let's go back and come down a little bit. Okay. Come back in. in for big rattlesnakes. This is the country for them. I got a big, big bachelor herd of male guy bulls in front of us, about 500 yards we're trying to get close to. They already got us pegged? A couple of them are looking. I don't know if they're watching the cows or watching us. We need more cover, but them cows are spooking everything. Yeah, the cows are kind of parallel. Yeah, they're fun to watch. You know, anybody that's watching this hunt, watching this show, that's never been to Texas, think, ah, oh, you know, Texas has got exotics, it's too easy. <laughs> if we stepped 10 yards out in that sunlight, they would all be gone. That's a big old bull right there. There's just nothing we can do on him. Now, I've never seen so many bulls with nine plus pushing 10 to over 10 inch horns on bulls since the drought of 2011. Oh. It's just something, the ones that live, the breeding, they're throwing these big obviously, long horn yeah, nails. Obviously had genetics to you gotta wonder if is it the cows or is it the bulls? Or a little bit of both. You know, in the whitetail world, the does are just as, mm -hmm. just as important, if not more important, to produce big animals. Dinner is unbelievable. Truly a South Texas tradition. Homemade guacamole, ranch style beans, Mexican rice, ribs, jalapeno sausage. Mm. You will not go hungry. So, I mean, anytime they walk out like that, and you're, if you're not tucked into the brush tight, they, they see you just like that. DSC's Trailing the Hunter's Moon is also brought to you by Sitka. Kinetrek, boots for the trail less traveled. Bino gear, binocular accessories you've got to have. 
MB Ranch King Blinds, built in pursuit of perfection. Double Nickel Taxidermy, and by Ripcord Rescue Travel Insurance. We got your back. That's a pretty gray bull walking across out there. There's one over here too. Oh yeah, close. There's one right here. 150 yards, 175 yards. I got a big, big batch of her. saw a little heart shape and, and some mass, but I don't know. I just can't tell what he is. Sometimes it, with the sun shining just right, that brown glistening yeah. and stuff, it's just hard to... He's not hanging with the other young there, bulls. There's a bunch of them behind him. Way here. over there, yeah. But he's not staying with them. We could go down the other side of the trees here and, come through the trees and get a good look at him right quick. Yeah, I'll just go right to him. Might just be a shooter. We'll go look at him. Bad, Blake. Point of the shoulder. Or you can let him get broadside some more. No, I've got him right there. I just gotta get this steady. You ready? He's hit hard the shoulder. Shoulders broke. I got him. I got him. Good shot, buddy. You hit him hard the first time. <laughs> Very good shot. What a stock. <laughs> That was awesome. What a stop. That was awesome. Uh, let's just make sure. Yeah, you hit him. You hit him. And he's done Absolute. right there. Point Absolute. of the point of the shoulder. He's right there. Yeah. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that bull. Look at the mass. Yeah. 
Look at the mass, jeez Louise. Oh, that, look at the, the ribs going down too. Mr. Mike. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, sir. Good, good, good. There's nothing wrong with that bull. Look at the bases on him. A little broomed <laughs> off and broken on that side. No, those ridges go down pretty good. Yeah. The nail guy antelope, indigenous to the Middle East, India, and a few of those other countries, but they were introduced to Texas in the early 19th century, and they have done amazingly well uh -huh. down here along the Texas coast in this very tropical, animal. subtropical animal. That's what's just... What a magnificent animal. Mike, thank you again, my friend. Enjoyed it. 